thank you, Bhagwan, for participating in this conversation we're going to have today. And uh, this is, again, we finished uh, a weekend seminar. And then uh, to have this opportunity to just explore some of these questions more deeply uh, is, and, and share them with a larger audience is, I think, is, is a wonderful opportunity to have to share this. And uh, when we spoke uh, two months ago, uh, we looked at you know, some of the basics around meditation and we were exploring these two ideas, you know, what is mind uh, and what is silence you know, in the context of, of your work. And, um, and from that, you know, in this conversation today, I, I wanted to begin to explore sort of the implications of meditation in terms of living in the world. Uh, because you know we're all struggling trying to make to navigate life, uh, and you know is there some kind of roadmap we can follow um, from this meditative practice? But before we go there, um, it would be helpful for people who are just maybe tuning into this video to sort of summarize you know what the practice is. Um, uh, what the practice of meditation is. Right, yeah. and, and the particular way that you, know, you approach it, the people who work with yeah. you. So it's not important to know how to meditate, but it's important to know what is meditation. So meditation is about the question Who's meditating? So, so to be in that question, not to do something, but to be in this question of who's meditating, you sit quietly, you try to be effortless in the sense that you're not doing something so you're effortless, you're not doing anything. But you need to be alert at the same time. Alert and effortlessness, these are the two key words that define meditation. And in that state of alert effortlessness, to find or inquire who's meditating. Who am I that's meditating? So. That inquiry is meditation. Mm -hmm. Finding out who the meditator is, is meditation. Now, also, it's important to know what's not meditation. If you're in your thoughts, or in your feeling, or in your imagination, that's not meditation. People call it meditation. For example, guided meditation. They talk you into something, a, a, a story uh, that you're going along a river and the waterfalls and scenery and landscapes and they take you through uh, some words like that. But if you start imagining all this, that's not meditation. Mm -hmm. That's mind. Any type of mental activity is not meditation. So meditation is getting beyond the mind. And if you're getting beyond the mind, you can't have any type of mental activity, which means you can't be engaged in your thoughts and feelings or pictures or sensations, and you can't be struggling. So I've described now what is meditation and what's not meditation. Most of the meditation that you see in the world, I'm sad to say, is not meditation even if they call it so. Is that because there's effort involved? There's effort involved, there's chanting involved, there's imagination involved, there's mm -hmm. uh, fantasies involved. Uh, that's not meditation. Mm -hmm. Meditation is getting beyond the mind. So to get beyond the mind, you must know who's meditating or who's experiencing these thoughts. But if someone, you know, if you, if you gave that question to someone, you know, who's meditating, who's having these thoughts, they're just going to say me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So say me. So I, then I have to uh, further explain that you have to be in the question of who's meditating, but don't answer. Mm -hmm. 
don't answer. You have to be in the question, but not answer it. So is that this word inquiry? When you yeah, that's inquiry, yeah. And so Being in the question. Yeah. Inquiry is a word that we don't use that often. But, yeah. Uh, maybe explain why that word was chosen. Was it by Ramana Maharshi? Who? Yeah, it's Ramana Maharshi who called it. Uh, well, it's not. Ramana Maharshi in contemporary times brought it up. He was there in the, till the 50s, I think. But it's a very old uh, uh, practice. It's, it's mentioned, I think, in the old scriptures thousands of years ago. And Ramana has picked it up and given it importance and and sort of explained it in a clear way and sort of practiced it mm -hmm. just by his presence. Mm -hmm. But if, if if it's not a mental activity, yeah. then then what is inquiry? Yeah, I inquiry. You're trying to find out who you are, other than body and mind. Mm -hmm. So, if you answer, then you're back in the mind. And you're trying to discover the entity that you call I, or the, which is the meditator. You're trying to discover that. And that's not body or mind. That's an entity in you that's not body or mind. So you used another word there, uh, to discover. That it's a discovery. Yeah, you, have to, you have to discover because... because in the ordinary way, you think yourself to be this body and mind. Mm -hmm. And the, the person that you are really, the entity that you are, is not ordinarily known or you're not in contact with ordinary. So it has to be discovered because you think yourself to be this body, having these thoughts and feelings. That's who you normally experience yourself to be. But to discover the entity that you are, that has to be inquired into and discovered. But it's not ordinarily apparent. Mm -hmm. So is that um, almost like an energetic kind of discovery? Or? Yes, it's, uh, because it's an energetic discovery because as you inquire thus, without, and I said this is beyond body-mind, so as you're inquiring thus, the mind quietens, and only when the mind quietens, can you discover this? Because as long as the mind is not quiet, you're in the mind. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in the entity that you know yourself to be body and mind. As long as the mind is not quiet, that entity cannot be discovered. So, um, in our normal day-to-day -day life, you know, there's a certain degree of turmoil, whether we acknowledge it or not. Um, and that this quieting of the mind um, how does that um, release us from, from that turmoil? From the turmoil? Yeah. yeah, the quietening of the mind implies there's no turmoil. Mm -hmm. But now I think what your question may be is how is that useful in day-to-day -day life? Mm -hmm. Or how is it applied? Right. Yeah? So when, when you're quiet, when the mind is quiet, there's clarity. And when there's clarity, things are easily understood. Difficult situations are easily understood. And what action needs to be taken is also easily understood. It's clear. Mm -hmm. Clarity implies that. It's clear what the problem is, and it's clear what the action is. So there's no conflict, there's no turmoil, there's no struggle, mm -hmm. there's no effort. So meditation brings a quiet mind, and with the quiet mind, you live your life in the world with clarity. Because of the clarity, you, everything's understood, what needs to be done, or what the situation is, is easily understood, and the action also easily un understood. And not only easily understood, but the energy to perform that action is also available, mm -hmm. because you're not wasted it with turmoil and effort mm -hmm. and struggle. So you're describing um, sort of a moment of a decision, um, a moment of choice that uh, we may not know to go whether to go left or right. I can't see my way through this impasse in my life. And for myself, this is something that uh, defined my entire last year. That I came into 
a, a lot of unexpected uh, misfortune, pitfalls, left, right. Um, no matter how I tried, I would keep coming up against these, um, this blockage. And, and so, the, um, so there's a, a trust factor in this because um, you know, what I expected to happen never happened. You know, I felt, well, I've been meditating, I've been doing all the right things, and at the same time, I can't find my way through, through the forest. And so, and you're saying that uh, through this, um, the quiet mind, that there's a clarity that uh, will inform us. So, I guess I would like you to speak about that struggle and, and, and why it's there. Yeah, in this situation that you were in, in this difficult situation, you were not in a quiet mind. Mm. You, you were in the mind mm. and you didn't know to, whether to go left or right. Mm. And so that's typical of mind. The mind is always in doubt, always in conflict. There's always in duality. In clarity, there's, there's not this uh, conflict. In clarity, there's, uh, you know what, what needs to be done. You understand what needs to be done. But now, you say that you've done all this meditation and there was this expectation. <laughs> <laughs> but that itself is a problem. Mm. Because you're not supposed to have expectation. Mm -hmm. See, if you have expectation, you're in the mind again. You see? So, you're saying that when we say the word trust, yeah. we often have a little caveat. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. To be in trust means no expectation. Mm -hmm. If you're in expectation, where's the trust? Mm -hmm. Ex to be in trust means to be in surrender, mm -hmm. which means you don't have any expectation. You trust that whatever's happening is for the best, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. That's trust. And not, it should be the way I want. It didn't happen the way I want. Or, I trust it's going to happen the way I want. No, that's not trust. Mm -hmm. That's your trying to, you know, sort of put a condition to trust. There has to be an unconditional trust, which means whatever happens in this moment, I accept. And I'm not in doubt about it. It's a fact because it's happened. Mm -hmm. it's, re it's the reality of the situation, so I trust it. But in the moment of crisis, there's also fear. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and so uh, now we have, you know, um, I guess an inner battle, you know, between you know my fears, which want to pull me under, and uh, this other clarity or trust that says this is unfolding perfectly. Yeah. No. So when there's fear, you're, you're in the mind. Mm -hmm. You're not in clarity. Mm -hmm. You're in the mind. And in mind, there's always problem. No? There's always struggle. There's always doubt. There's always suffering, loss of energy, confusion. That's mind. And meditation is supposed to take you out of this into a state of clarity, where there's no fear and there's trust. But can't this... Um, this trust take you places that you're not prepared to go? Uh, in what way do you mean? Uh, that, is, I guess this is around expectation again, that, you know, you're saying to be completely present yeah. uh, in the circumstance as it's yeah. been given to you, but if that is an enormous life challenge, um, you know, what happens in that moment in terms of of remaining centered and calm and dispassionate yeah. in, in, in the heat of battle. <laughs> yeah, in the heat of battle to remain calm mm -hmm. and uh, whatever happens, you're in acceptance of it. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't mean there's no action from your side. There's an acceptance of the fact of the situation. There's no struggle with it. There's no doubt or mistrust of it. There's an acceptance of the fact of the situation, and out of that acceptance, an action may happen. Mm -hmm. So this word, an action may happen, um, because we are all wired to say, I am deciding, I am choosing, I am making uh, a, a big turn in my life, I'm turning over a new leaf, all this. Um, and so these junctures uh, which uh, are going to 
unfold a new chapter in our, in our life and our story, uh, we give a lot of, of weight to those and the importance of choosing wisely. But you're saying it just uh, happens. Yeah, so, so, so your choosing and your deciding, again, it's, 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 it's proof that you're in the mind. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem. So, so y instead of you choosing and deciding using your mind, meditation would quiet your mind, bring you into a state of clarity, and that clarity is far more intelligent than the mind. Mm -hmm. Because the mind is, is not clear. Mm -hmm. The mind is, is turbid. It's like a turbidity in consciousness. And clarity is like where the turbidity is gone. Mm -hmm. So you see things easily. So the mind wants to decide things, what, what needs to be done. And that's a problem. Because in the mind there's always contradiction. And contradiction brings, brings conflict and confusion. When you get beyond mind, or when you quieten mind, you're in a state of clarity. In that clarity, you don't have to decide. It's already decided. Mm -hmm. It's clear. So let's I explore this word, because when you said that clarity, there's an inherent intelligence in yes. clarity. Um, elaborate on that. Yeah. So, you see, it's something like, uh, let's say the mind is like wearing colored glasses or dark glasses. You can't see. It, it's, it's night and you're wearing dark glasses. You can hardly see anything. Clarity is like removing the glasses and you see clearly then. So because you can see clearly, you can see which way to go. It's dark and you've got colored glasses. You, you, you don't know which way to go. Mm -hmm. That's you're saying that there's an, an intel, inherent Intel intelligence. Intelligence, to this yeah. The the intelligence is the seeing, which way to go. That's the intelligence. Mm -hmm. So how is that different than you know I have experience, I've seen this situation before, I know what to do, versus there's uh, this inherent intelligence. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yeah. Now I'll explain that. Mm -hmm. You have experience, and you've you have you know what to do. Mm -hmm. You see, that's, there's nothing original in that. Mm -hmm. That's a repetition of a pattern mm -hmm. of your past experience. So whatever you're doing in that sense would not be creative. It would not be original. Mm -hmm. It would not be spontaneous. It would just be a repetition of your past experience. Mm -hmm. You see? So in routine things it might work, but there would be... you no originality in it, mm -hmm. no freshness in it. It's just a mechanical routine or, or mechanical action that's coming from your past experience. You're not, there's, no, there's nothing original in it. Whereas each moment that you experience is an original moment. Mm -hmm. So if you keep the mind aside, which is all your past experience, if you keep that aside and with clarity look at the situation, it's like a moment that's never existed before. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's a freshness to it. And you're living in that freshness, in that spontaneity and creativity. So an action from that state mm -hmm. would be far superior than from someone, from the mind of having past experience and you're using that past experience to take an action. So, so you're saying that we can actually trust spontaneity. Of course, yeah. And so uh, spontaneity, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, and, but you're saying that there is an inherent intelligence which is sort of guiding the story. Is that what you're saying? That's right. And, so, and you're saying there's a creative force which is mm -hmm. writing this, this story in, in some manner. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, the, the, no, the creative force uh, uh, well, has written the story already. But the creative force is guiding you mm. in your role. Now, I in any case, your role is played out. But if you're, if you're in the mind, your role is played out anyway because the role is written. And if you're in the mind, then you play your role with struggle. Mm -hmm. And if you're in clarity, the role is played out anyway 
but you're in tune with your role. Mm -hmm. So you're in harmony with yourself and the role mm -hmm. and the universe. So that the, there actually is um, a, a story waiting to unfold and that if we're in the mind, we're going to struggle because we're not willing to be spontaneously to uh, act in the moment and respond to what, what's calling us. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you're not in tune with the story. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the story written out or the role that you play in the story, but you're in the mind. And the, this mind is always in confusion because there's duality in the mind. There's inherent conflict in the mind. So you're playing a role, but in confusion. Mm -hmm. But uh, if there is this, um, this story that we can be in tune with, wouldn't we all gladly give ourselves to that? Wouldn't, you? wouldn't we gladly give ourselves to this perfectly harmonious story? Why, is, why, why is, do we resist the story that no, where it wants to take us? You, you wouldn't resist the story if you were in clarity. No, but I'm, I'm saying if we're not in clarity. Yeah, if you're not in clarity, if you're in the mind, you resist the story because you have doubts. Mm -hmm. Should I go left or right? Should I choose this or that? So there's always this doubt, and so there's resistance. So the, the story is taking the mind places it doesn't want to go, is what you're saying. Is... Uh, well, the, the story is written, and the mind doesn't know what the story is and doesn't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's more than the, the mind can process. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So um, I've, I've been writing this book, uh, and I raise these, these questions up front. Um, there's actually a, a neighbor. Uh, she broke up with her boyfriend uh, after living with him for five years. It was very traumatic. And uh, then her mom came up to Boston to help her move into a new apartment. And she's walking down the street and she bumps into the sister of her girlfriend from high school like 900 miles away. All of a sudden, Boston, she just bumped into this person and, and the, the girlfriend says, oh, you know, what are you doing here? And she says, oh, what are you doing here? And she says, why don't you come? I'm having a little party um, uh, Saturday night. She goes to the party and she meets a man in the corner of the room. Uh, next thing you know, uh, she moves to Prague. She's living with him. She gets engaged. She gets married. After struggling for five years with this other guy, the moment she gives him up, this other thing happens. And so I, I tell that story to everyone, and one third of the people, you know, will say, "Oh, that was complete chance that she bumped into this person on the street." And other people, my mother included, you know, will say, "Oh, that was just her her will, her volition. You know, she put her energy into the moment and made that happen." And then other people say, "Oh, it was God's will." Um, and so I'm, I think I'm hearing from you, you're saying that everything is written, so that was God's will. Um, but at the same time, um, she could have been tired and not walk down that street, you know, or say, Mom, let's just order, uh, let's just order in, have pizza delivered. And but been that's also written, mm. that she would not be tired. Mm -hmm. So Everything is written. Everything is written. Yeah. Every detail. Every detail. That, that you drink this glass of water at six o'clock in the evening before this talk, mm -hmm. that's written. So... Um, you want me to prove that? Uh, <laughs> Do you have the book I, I in can, your pocket? No, no, no I, can, I can prove it. Okay. I'll tell you why. Or oh, I can explain it, not mm -hmm. prove it. You see, there is the feeling that I can do. Mm hmm. hmm? There's the, in the story, there's the idea that maybe it could have happened this way or that. Mm -hmm. Or there's the feeling, uh, I can drink this water if I want, or I can stand up or sit down whenever I want. There's this feeling that I can, mm -hmm. I can do. Mm -hmm. hmm? Now, if you meditate and you inquire into yourself, you'll discover eventually that there is no I. Mm -hmm. See? So if there's no I, how mm. can I do? Mm. 
It's an illusion. The mm -hmm. I is an illusion. Mm. So the thought, the notion that you can do must also be an illusion. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing you can do. It's all written. It's all happening. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the illusion of doing, uh, which is a really powerful illusion, yeah, very beguiling. Powerful. And the cause of a lot of problems. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the fact that we um, are, are living an illusory existence, yeah. um, that here are my problems, here are my solutions, uh, I've surmounted this problem, but now I'm facing a new problem, and now I feel good about myself, but now I feel bad about myself. So this is unfolding, this, this drama, this yeah. melodrama. And that the, uh, and so it's not really to become more skilled at navigating life. Uh, you're saying that it's really to see through the illusion. Is that right? To see through the illusion. If you see through the illusion, then you're in clarity. So to see through the illusion, you have to get beyond mind, because it's mind that creates the illusion. Mm -hmm. The notion I is the root of the mind. And so the thought that I can do, and I have a choice, that thought is an illusion, mm -hmm. because the I itself is an illusion. And then, so the I, through the mind, creates the illusion of the world and uh, with, with thinking that you have all these choices to make and this is what you should do and not do. Mm -hmm. So that's all illusion. And the cause of, of all misery, this is the cause, the root of the cause of all misery. The fact is, there's nothing you can do. And if you can be... Now, this is, this is not a... a, a, a what sort of state would you say? A lethargic state or uh, what's the word for it? Resi not a state of resignation, mm -hmm. but it's a state of alertness. In a state of alertness, you must realize there's nothing you can do. You see, it's not resignation and oh, there's nothing I can do, so just be lazy and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Not that way. You have to be alert watching the mind that's trying to trick you into thinking that you can do. Mm -hmm. So being alert to the mind and not going with it, you're out of the illusion and in a state of clarity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can say for myself that the, the more that I have uh, inquired and gone th through these, um, these mm -hmm. barriers within and that I've actually had to work faster and harder. <laughs> it's like you're going 60 miles an hour, next thing you know, you're going 120 miles an hour. Um, but it is, um, but with less effort. It, it's, a, it's a paradox. Uh, are you saying with inquiry, with inquiry, your work is speeded up? Yes, that you're, I've actually find that I'm being called upon to do more and more and more. And you're, you're able to? Yes. So. So that's the benefit, no? It's, it's the benefit, but it's not necessarily an easy ride. To, uh -huh. to live at that, at that uh, vibration. No, no, it's an easy ride in the sense that you're doing more mm -hmm. than what you could otherwise. Mm. Hmm? I, is that what you're saying? I think so, yes. Yeah. So, well, you were saying that it's not a lethargy, it's not a being passive. Yeah, that's right. So, so if you're saying that when you do the inquiry, you can do much more at a faster speed, that's absolutely the case because the resistance of the mind is not there. If you're in inquiry, you're in a relative state of clarity and things, things move very smoothly in a flow. There's no blockages, there's no resistance. Mm. So um, let's explore this, this other question that came up when you were here before. Uh, someone had brought up this word synchronicity, mm -hmm. which is a, a sort of a, a new age term. It goes back to Jung. And we use it when we uh, see coincidence. Um, and it's always a happy coincidence. You know, and, and we use it as a sign that I'm in the right place at the right time. And when you brought this word up, or someone brought it up in the question and answer, 
and you said synchronicity, you said the whole universe is synchronous. Everything is synchronous. Yeah. And which every action, every movement in the world is synchronous. Yeah. And so then, um, and I was sitting with this, you know, everything is synchronous. And then uh, I, I called you up and, uh, and at the end of our conversation, I said, Bhagwan, I have one more question. And I said, when you say everything is synchronous, does that include, you know, when we're in the mind and we're doing, creating trouble and grief and disharmony and making a mess of things? Is that also synchronous? It's also synchronous. It's also synchronous, but you're not in tune with it. If you're in the mind, it's still synchronous because everything is in a certain order, but you're not in tune with the order, and so you're not enjoying the synchronous, enjoying the state. And uh, but this, in a, in any case, it is so. Now, if you can, if you can not be in the mind and be in a state of clarity, then you can feel the synchronicity of everything. Mm -hmm. You can feel each moment exactly that this was supposed to happen and this should happen and not otherwise. So you're saying when you're walking down the street, you're sensing you can, synchronous universe. You can, almost, you can almost be in tune with the synchronicity of the universe. Yeah? Mm. Like, like now synchronicity of the universe, I mean, don't the, aren't the planets moving in that way, synchronous? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many planets and galaxies and all that, aren't they all moving in s synchronicity? They are, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, if, if that whole universe is moving, what's our little Earth and little world, the people in the world, uh, their action, wouldn't they also be synchronous? Well, because we're living in illusion, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't so when you're in illusion, then you're, you don't realize the synchronicity, mm -hmm. because you have the feeling that you can do. Mm -hmm. So, for, I can imagine someone watching this, you know, these two guys are having this very, you know, uh, unusual conversation about everything is written in the book, uh, the whole universe is synchronous, there's nothing you can do, uh, and I'm saying, uh, I believe there's nothing you can do, but at the same time, I've never had to do so much in my life. <laughs> there's nothing you can do, right. but there's a lot of action that might happen mm -hmm. through you, mm -hmm. but you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. You see, when I say there's nothing you can do, it doesn't mean no action. Mm -hmm. It means you don't have to do it, but it can happen through you. Mm -hmm. Do you see the difference in this? It's a subtle difference. Mm -hmm. You see, I might think I can do, and the moment I, I think that, I'm in trouble, because I'm in the mind. Mm -hmm. And I think I can do, what if it doesn't work out? There's the doubt of that. There's the, the duality of that, that creates conflict. Now, if I know I cannot do, because I'm inquiring who's doing, mm -hmm. and there's no I, so how can I do? Mm -hmm. Now, from that clarity, you see the situation in front of you, you understand the situation, and the action happens. Mm -hmm. So, when you say there's nothing you can do, it doesn't mean there will be no action. Mm -hmm. It means there will be an action that is clear, clear-cut, precise, right timing in, in the right amount, a perfect action, mm -hmm. and producing no reaction, mm -hmm. no residue. Talk about what that means, that yeah. a perfect action creates perfect no action. reaction. I'll tell you what a perfect action is. First of all, when you act from the mind, there's always a reaction because you're acting out of thought or feeling, and every thought and feeling has its opposite. So any action that you do or any thinking that you do has its opposite inherently. And so there could be a reaction. Or there will always be a reaction to any action that you do. And that's, that's called karma. Any action that you do produces a reaction. So you do a bad ac action and it produces a reaction. You do a good action, it produces a good effect. So any action or any thought or any feeling that you have will produce some reaction. And that reaction, you have to bear the consequence of that. 
mm. because it's yours. And, and that's called karma. Now, when it, what's meant by perfect action is an action that's not from the mind. It's from clarity. And it produces no karma. Mm -hmm. It produces no reaction. It's a pure action. Mm -hmm. It's the exact amount at the right moment. So there's no residue. Mm -hmm. And that's called perfect action. So karma is um, the residual effect yeah. of imperfect action. Yeah, the residual or the consequences of your action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The and, residue and the consequences. Yeah. And that's because there's a, a, a charge, something's inharmonious in that action that yeah. creates ripples. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hmm. And that carries on and on. The, the effects of that come back to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's called the effect of karma. Yeah. Hmm. And this goes on and on your whole life. And when you die, then you've still got a whole karma that you've built up all the consequences of your actions you have to bear. And when you die, then they're not over. So they carried, carried on to your next life, mm -hmm. if, you, if you can believe in that. So if you see people as they age, they appear to be carrying more and more sort of the weight of the world, the weight of their lives. Is that what you're saying is residual karma? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so the more karma you carry, the more burden you're carrying. Mm -hmm. And the more burden you carry, then you're susceptible to diseases, aging, and finally death. Mm -hmm. And not only death, but rebirth. Mm -hmm. Rebirth, which is like a punishment, mm -hmm. or you have to go through the whole process again. You've not learned your lesson. You have to learn it all over again by getting born again. Mm -hmm. and, and not having karma or the perfect action would be where you have an action which leaves no consequences, mm -hmm. no residue, and no burden to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so when there's no, you're not burdening yourself, then there's less illness, there's less aging, and you're living in a state of harmony and a state of well-being. Mm -hmm. I would like to go back a little bit about um, the question of doing and being in the mind, etc. Uh, that, you know, I uh, see myself as being a creative person. The work I do, um, the things that interest me, and creative people uh, have inspiration. And they'll have a thought that'll come in, they might be meditating. And all of a sudden they say, oh, I should do this, or I should try that. So when those thoughts come to us, you know, these inspiring thoughts and ideas, uh, is that of the mind or is that something that's seeking to come in? No, the inspiration is not of the mind. Inspiration came from a deeper place. Mm -hmm. hmm? And that, that resulted in a certain thought or a certain idea. Now, if you can remain in the place of inspiration and work from there, mm -hmm. and not from your mind. That would produce a different quality of creation. So what's coming through our thoughts um, is actually can be a, a source of inspiration, or it can be the communication from a deeper place. It could be, but then not to lose that deeper place, and not to get lost in your thought. Mm -hmm. Well, I, that, that happened to me during meditation. I had some wonderful idea and then yeah. I started going with it, you know. Yeah, that's right. So, so to, remain, to remain in that state of inspiration, which comes from meditation, that creative space, silence is a creative space. Mm -hmm. So to remain in that and from that to have your actions, your creative actions. Mm -hmm. So if we say, oh, this person is really creative, or that yeah. was a creative moment for me, uh, we're really talking about uh, this spontaneity that you've been describing, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so uh, there's a, a kind of um, participation uh, in something bigger than us. Is that this picture that you're, you're paint, 
painting here? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get to, the question. Um, it's a participation yeah. of to be in this spontaneous place. Is that yeah. right? We're participating with something bigger yeah. uh, This because you're saying that the story is, is written, yeah. but we want it to unfold with perfect action uh, from a deeper place of inspiration. I'm yes. trying to paint a big picture of what yeah. this is. So this, from, this way a, of from, from the deeper place, mm -hmm. when you look at the story, you've got the whole story, and you're in harmony with the whole story, and you're enjoying the whole story, even if there's trauma and misfortune and all that, it's not affecting you. Mm -hmm because you're seeing the whole. Well, I had a year of incredible misfortune, Yeah. Um, but it's also, see, it carried the seed of fortune, you know, throughout it. And it gets to the point where fortune and misfortune seem to be inseparable. Maybe you can say something about that. Yeah, so misfortune, uh, how would you explain that? That something that appears to be um, a, a unfortunate event, event turns out to yeah. be the the seed for something else to grow. Yeah, that's right. So misfortune, if misfortune didn't happen, you'd carry on the old way. Mm -hmm. So misfortune happened. For example, uh, I, I'll give you an example. A client of mine uh, is a businessman in Dubai. His business doesn't function. Hmm? He has difficulty in his business and he thinks he's having misfortune. And then, because of that, he's forced to go back home to India and start a business there. And I tell him, look, misfortune, there's always something in it. There's always something fortunate in misfortune. Even if you can't see it now, you'll see it later. But you, at the time of misfortune, you won't see it. With hindsight, you'll see it. But with hindsight, your eyesight is 2020. <laughs> so with hindsight, you'll see it. So now he has to leave Dubai. His whole business is there. He has to let it all go because it's not functioning. He's forced to go to India. And I tell him, look, there must be a reason. Be in trust. There must be a reason, and you'll see it afterwards. Mm. So he goes to India, and he settles there, and his business starts booming. Mm. And then he realizes that in Dubai, he was wasting his time. It was not a place worth living in. It's a place without a soul. And there's no culture there, there's nothing there. It's just a desert with buildings. And, and in India, he's flourishing. So now, he couldn't have decided on his own to go to India. He had to be pushed. Destiny had to push him, kick mm -hmm. him out of Dubai, bring misfortune to him so that he could proceed to India in fortune. But the Dubai chapter of his life wasn't a mistake. Uh, was the chapter D of, Dubai. of his life in Dubai a mistake? Well, it, it turned out to be that. Yeah. But uh, he didn't have any other choice than he, to go through Dubai. Yeah, he, he, he had a desire to go to Dubai. At that particular time when he went there, perhaps it was, uh, there was something for him to learn or to experience. And so he was there for so many years, but it didn't work out. But it wouldn't have worked out, or would it, to just uh, skip Dubai and go straight to India? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it may not have worked because there must be still the thought, oh, I've, Dubai would have been a better place. You know? mm -hmm. So maybe he had to go through that mm -hmm. to experience that it's, it's not the right place. So if you're bringing that up, then you're implying that there is transformation in this, in this process, in this story. Mm -hmm. Transformation. In this that story. he had to go through Dubai yeah. in order to clear this, this need to experience something outside of India? Or? No, actually, I'm, I told the story just to explain to you that misfortune could be a blessing. Mm -hmm. So there's misfortune in Dubai, so he has to go to India. Right. And he flourishes in India. But I guess I'm taking it to the next step in yeah. terms of misfortune and hardship uh, if there is a, um, a transformative purpose in that. Yeah, in everything there's transformation. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, everything's evolving and transforming. You know? 
So I'm going to just uh, wanted to uh, finish with uh, what seemed to be uh, the theme of uh, the talk that you gave on Thursday, uh, which was um, it's okay to let go and 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 just be yourself. Uh, and uh, and and where that came from, it's a, a brief story. Uh, in the middle of my year of hardship, and I was struggling and had some experience that was unsettling, and then I called you up, uh, something I've never done before uh, in Switzerland, and we uh, we meditated over the phone, and and then at the end of it, you said, uh, um, "It's okay to let go." and just be yourself. And so that, that statement reverberated in me for uh, many months, um, that it's okay to let go. And, it's, and it sounds very benign on one level, and another level it's um, a, a, a radical notion to let go. Yeah. And, and maybe you can say something about what you are asking or inviting me challenging me uh, to do and you said that. Yeah, I think at that moment you might have been just ripe mm -hmm. to let go. Mm -hmm. If I said it earlier, I must have said it many times earlier and right. wouldn't have any effect. Had, had but no you effect. may have been ripe just at the time. I was in crisis. You were in crisis mm. and so you had to let go. There was no other way. You know? And I said it in a benign way, let go and be yourself. But it had great effect because in a crisis, you let go, and things get clear. Mm. It's the struggling that's making the crisis in the first place. Mm. There's misfortune, and you're struggling with it, and you're in crisis. Now, the struggling, the mind trying to solve the problem and to get out of this is making it worse. Mm -hmm. And it gets worse and worse till the time comes when you, someone tells you, let go. Mm -hmm. In this case, I told you, let go. And when you let go, suddenly things were okay. Mm -hmm. So let go and be yourself, because unless you let go, you're in the mind. Not letting go implies you're in the mind. Letting go of everything takes you to yourself. Mm -hmm. And this, in the self, there are no problems. Mm -hmm. In the self, everything is harmonious, mm -hmm. everything is fortunate. You're in trust, you're in a state of well-being. Everything's wonderful and beautiful. Mm. Yeah, so this, uh, to be yourself, is, um, it's, it's a, it can be heard on so many different levels. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, commonly it's understood to be yourself means to know your mind, mm. to know your desires and your unconscious desires, that's knowing yourself. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're meaning here. Mm -hmm. Here we're meaning let go of everything you know to be yourself, and that self is the one that you don't know, mm. the real one. Mm -hmm. What you know is the body and mind. That self, to let that go in order to discover yourself. So that's the one that has to be discovered. Ordinarily, when people talk of knowing yourself, they mean the mind. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're talking about. We, we, are in a, we, are, we, are, we are doing meditation. So we are trying to discover the self that's unknown. Mm -hmm. well, I would like to, to leave it on that note, okay. uh, this invitation to inquire into you know, the self that we can trust implicitly, that is spontaneous um, and that uh, is capable of perfect action. Um, and I would uh, just want to thank you for, for taking the time uh, to, to have this conversation. And can we do it again next time? You're welcome. Yeah, sure. Right. You can do it every time. <laughs> All right. After every seminar, if you like. You know. All right. Well, thank you, Bhagwan. You're welcome. Okay.